folks, this is Meredith from the Papery Craftery. Today I'm going to be sharing a great beginner's monarch butterfly project. You're going to need the template from my website, which I'll link to down below in the description box. You're going to need a few different colors of quilling paper, a bright orange and a white. This bright orange is from Quilled Creations, and I have a white, a standard just black paper, and also uh, a leaf green. Those are all from Craft Harbor. I'll link to those down below as well. You are also going to need a work board with some pins and some wax paper. Whichever kind of quilling tool you prefer, either a needle or a slotted tool will be fine, but we are gonna be using a long slotted tool to make some cones, which are gonna be the bodies for these butterflies. So you're going to want to grab one of those as well, whatever glue you like in your needle nose bottle too. The first thing you need to do is print off your template. And just notice that each butterfly has four different sections to their wings. There's two larger pieces, a left and a right, and then there's two smaller pieces. Each of those four groups of wings is one butterfly. So just cut off whatever you need. I'm actually, just for my own ease here, I'm going to be cutting this straight down the middle. And even though I'm only making one butterfly, I'm using this whole big chunk of the template. I just find it's going to be easier than trying to pin down the four corners of a smaller piece of paper. So I'm not making three butterflies here, I'm just going to be making one. But again, just for my own uh, easiness, I'm just going to use a bigger piece. So here I have my template all set up underneath my wax paper. I can still see my design underneath, but when I build it on top of the wax paper, I'll be able to pull everything off nice and easy. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is making the orange sections of my butterfly. And to do that, I'm using the orange paper, obviously, that I had before. And these are going to all be rolled into teardrop shapes. This first section here is a six inch strip. So I roll that on my needle tool from start to finish. I'm going to let it open up just a little bit in my hands. Glue the end down. Seal that and then to form the teardrop, I'm just gonna pinch one side of it while holding the center with my other hand. There you go. I'm also going to be wrapping this teardrop in a small strip of black paper. And I found that it just sort of just makes it pop a little bit in the middle of the butterfly wing, but it also makes it so that it blends in with the rest of the wing. It's, it's kind of hard to explain. It's not a necessary step. I just think it adds a little bit of something to your finished project. So for this project, we're going to be wrapping all of these orange teardrops in black paper. So to do that, I glue onto the pointed end just a little bit and then I just wrap it. I think twice is good. And I like to start and finish at the pointed end because I think it hides the torn paper a little bit easier. This teardrop is going to be used for the top section in the larger part of the wings. There's also a second six inch teardrop and a smaller four inch teardrop that make up the rest of that wing. And then the two on the bottom half of the leaves are also going to be made up of four inch papers. Then you're gonna do the exact same sizes on the other wing. 
I'm going to mention all of the dimensions for these pieces are going to be in the original blog post that I wrote for this project. That will be linked down below in the description box. So if you missed any of the sizes on any of these shapes, go ahead to that post and you'll see it all written there as well. Once I have all of my teardrops made, I can start building the butterfly using some pins and adding a little bit of glue between each shape just to make everything secure. Next we're going to be using some small pieces of white twilling paper to make small tight foils which are paper that is rolled up on your quilling tool but not let to open up at all. Those are going to be what you fill in to the circles on your butterfly template. So each of these pieces is about an inch and a half long. I'd roll them all the way on my tool and before I even take it off I add another little dot of glue and roll that to the end. And then I'm going to wrap these in black as well, the same reason I did the orange pieces earlier. But this is even easier because I don't even have to take it off my quilly tool. I add another little dot of glue and I apply the strip of black paper. This is about two inches long. And then I just wrap that start to finish as well. And that is going to be glued while it's still on my quilling tool also. can see how I have started using these to fill in some more of the template. Again, these are for the circles there. So each of the larger wings, the larger pieces of the wings, they're going to have four of these. And then the smaller wings on the bottom, they're going to have three each. So all together you need, what is that? 14, seven and seven. Yes. 14 all together. And to uh, get these to stay, I don't want to just glue them with wax paper because you know I'm going to be removing these from the wax paper later on so I want to kind of get them all to where they're sticking to the the uh, orange parts that I've already uh, used to build the first part of the butterfly. For the rest of your butterfly template, you're going to want to fill it in with small black pieces uh, rolled up in the same way you just rolled up those little white papers. They're going to be various sizes. I would recommend if you happen to have some clear glue like I just showed there. Clear glue works really great for black paper because it doesn't show up all the little uh, straggly things when it dries. That can happen sometimes. Um, I didn't start here using, black, uh, using clear glue so I decided I wouldn't use it to finish but I want to let you know that's always an option. And this part's kind of like a puzzle. There's no right or wrong way of doing this. I just make a bunch of different uh, small tight coils made up of paper, you know, an inch, some of them, some of them are two inches, and just kind of piece it together filling in the space that's left up until the edge. Again, there's no right or wrong way to do this so I don't have exact measurements because if the rest of your pieces ended up being glued in a slightly different way or maybe your pieces were just a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. 
the sizes I gave you wouldn't exactly match up anyway. So just have fun with this part. You know, I would make a few extra of different sizes and just piece it together however you like. Once your wings are totally filled in, you can use your needle tool or small instrument to peel them off of your wax paper. And we are going to wrap this entire piece with another strip of black paper, just again to give it more of a finished look. So to do that, uh, you're going to want to, again I would start at the corner. I think it always hides seams uh, pretty nicely if you start at a point or a corner. And glue down your black strip of paper and then you can start wrapping it around your butterfly wing. You can add a little bit of glue as you go, just drop, drop, drop all the way around or you can just start wrapping it. I would probably add a little bit of glue as I went. I think it's just going to make it, make it more secure and there has been times where I just got a little overexcited and started wrapping like this and then you can see some gaps and it just doesn't stay down as much as if you added some glue. So that's why I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's just a little bit of glue, really small dots, just dot, dot, dot around wherever the strip would hit some of those coils. And it'll help you get it to sit a little bit flatter and help it to um, just not have any kind of weird gaps or anything like that. And then when I get back to this long part again, a few more dots, dot, dot, dot. There you go. And now I'm just gonna wrap it nice and tight to the end and then tear off any excess. to wrap the other three sections of your butterfly wing in the same way. After your wings are done, we're going to build the body of the monarch butterfly. Uh, I chose this leaf green paper. I just, I think it's a nice contrast to the bright orange and the graphic black and white. I just, I just think it works nicely together for this project. We're going to be making the body out of two cones. Uh, I have a video on cones that I'm going to link right now if you want to watch that and get a little bit more detail about how to use this long slotted tool and make the cone shape. But the basic idea is you start by rolling in one place so the paper kind of builds up on itself and then start pulling it down at an angle and turning so that it it kind of overlaps just slightly and as it's doing that it makes this cone shape it gets a little bit wider and a little bit longer um, again the other the other video gives a lot more detail than that so I would start there if you've never used a long slotted tool to make a cone before when I get to the bottom of the strip, add a little bit of glue and just finish wrapping that so the glue gets a chance to set a little bit. So this is one half of the, um, the body of the, the butterfly. I let this one build up a little bit on the end and then I kept rolling it. Like I said, the other one, I'm not gonna let it build up as much. To take it off the tool, I just kind of twist and pull, and I, I decided here I didn't like kind of that big lump in the middle, so I very, very gently and slowly pulled on the bottom to stretch it out a little bit. And to get these to set, you put a little bit of glue on the outside. Normally I would use a paintbrush and 
kind of brush all that, but because I didn't mention it earlier in the list of supplies, I'm just going to use my finger. Same difference. Works just fine. That is what's going to set the shape of your cone. So there you can let that dry on the side. You're going to do the same exact thing for the other 10 inch strip, but this time, instead of letting it build up as much, you're going to sort of just let it build up a tiny bit and then start rolling to the side. This is going to be much more of a cone shape than the first half. of the butterfly body is much more pointed. This is going to be the tail half, if, if they have a tail, I'm not sure what you would call it on the bottom of the body, but it comes down to much more of a point on this side. And you could even kind of push it to one side and make it sort of curved, if that's something you're looking for, or just keep it a more of a straight situation. But once you have the shape you like, again, with a little bit of glue, your finger or a brush, you're going to apply that and let that dry. After those two halves have set, you can start um, gluing these two pieces together. All you need to do for that is add a little bit of glue to one side and then just stick the other half on. If you have tacky glue, that'll work really good for this part as well. You don't have to hold it as long. As long as your two halves were made from about the same size paper, they should match up pretty well. If it is off very slightly, don't worry about it because we're gonna wrap up that seam in a minute anyway. So that's what it should look like at this point. You're gonna to wanna to let that be for a little bit. And then once it's set, you can take about an inch, inch and a half of that same green paper that you used, wrap it around and it will conceal the seam that you made uh, and then you'll be done with your little wormy caterpillar body. At this point, you will be finally able to completely put together your Monarch Butterfly. I've already glued the top and bottom of each of the halves together. Uh, if you want your butterfly to just be flat, um, you can at this point add your body to the center and be done with it. Uh, but we're actually going to be doing some butterflies in motion, the butterflies in flight. So we're going to have to kind of prop up the wings a bit so that they um, are kind of sitting in like a V, an upside down V shape. And then we're gonna put the body on top of that. And you're gonna see me struggle with this for a bit. I just couldn't get it to work for me and that's okay. Sometimes things don't work in two seconds, either when you've made the same project 50 times. It is okay to struggle with this for a minute, but you're sort of looking for, again, an upside down little V shape. When your butterfly wings are finally cooperating, you can glue them together by applying a tiny line of glue down the center where they meet. Of course, that happened again, and that's okay. Just back to the drawing board, add a couple more pins to stabilize it, and it will all work, I promise, even if it takes a few minutes. You just have to get it all propped up. It will be fine. 
but once you have those together you can apply some glue like I said down the middle and then you can put your butterfly body on whenever you're ready if you want to wait till your wings are completely dry that is fine if you want to use tacky glue to make this whole process go even faster that is a great idea as well so I also wanted to show some other versions that I have here this one has some little antenna on it and another one that is in flight and just some more different shaped bodies one thing to note when you are deciding how you're going to glue your wings on you want to pay attention to which part of which side of your wings was on the wax paper directly because you may have some dried glue on those parts and if you don't want people to see that in your final product you might want to just pay attention to which way your wings are going to be facing just something to keep in mind as you're putting these together you give this project a try especially if you're you're sort of new to quilling because it's a great mix of traditional quilling and three-dimensional quilling and it's also a good practice for learning how to use shapes for a specific purpose in a quilling design where you, for this project we didn't just GM a bunch of different colors into the middle of the template we use specific shapes for a specific reason to make the monarch butterfly pattern but in a really basic way as always, leave any comments you have down below. Don't forget to look in the description box for all the supplies and the links to the original post for the template and all of the sizes of the shapes that I used. I hope you like and subscribe to my channel if you found this project fun. There's a bunch of other videos and you'll also be notified the next time that I post. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.